everyone, my name is Alexandra and I'm a watercolor artist. With 4th of July coming up next Tuesday, I was hoping to paint something for all of my American followers out there. I had shared on social media and just asked what you guys wanted to see, what you thought of with 4th of July, and I got a wide range of responses, but a ton of you guys were saying that when you think of America, you think of national parks. So today we're going to paint Yosemite National Park. Let's get started. Today we're going to be using 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. For paintbrushes, you'll need three different sizes. I have Opus Allegro number eight, four, and zero, but if you guys have a small, medium, and large paintbrush, that'd be perfect. For paints, I'm using a mixture of Winsor & Newton's professional watercolors. I use some green, yellow, red, burnt orange, and I'm also using Art Philosophy & Co's Woodland palette mostly using the colors Bear and Greystone. Two cups of water and a napkin for drying your paintbrushes. When I decided that I wanted to paint Yosemite National Park, I wanted to find a nice photo as a reference photo to paint. So I had just looked around at photos that different photographers have taken and found such a pretty one by their Instagram handle is V underscore outdoors, Vitor Rodriguez. You guys should definitely check his photos out on Instagram. His stuff is absolutely stunning. So what I did with the photo that I found is, um, it's very faint, so it might be a little tricky to see, but I have kind of blocked out the main shapes of the mountain, the lake, and the trees. So we're going to be following this. We're gonna start with painting it in, and then I will add some pen detail after, you guys can either stop once it's painted or continue on with me and add some more detail. So once you've finished drawing out your main shapes, then we can get started with painting. So first thing that I'm gonna start with is the main mountain that we see in our photo here. So I wanna start with a nice and light color. I'm just going into my palette and I'm mixing Um, I just have some brown. I just want to add a little bit of yellow to it. And I just want to warm up the tone a bit. So we're going to add a little bit of red. So I have very, very watered down paint because I want it to start super, super faint and we're gonna add layers as we go. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more orange to it. So again, we don't have to be too, too picky about what color we end up with here. It's just gonna be nice and faint while we get started. And I'm just gonna follow the general shape of the mountain. So I'm starting with a color that just has a yellow undertone because I can see in the photo, the sun is shining on the mountain. All right, and I'm gonna paint in just with the same color for now, this mountain that's in the background. With these types of scenery photos, you'll notice that I jump around quite a bit just because I have to let let layers dry before I move on to the next one. So in the photo, we have the reflection of the mountain below. So I'm gonna paint in with our entire painting. We're kind of gonna go with sort of this mirrored effect. So whatever I paint on top, I'm gonna paint on the bottom. Um, this photo is so beautiful because it's such a nice glassy reflection. So it honestly is very perfectly mirrored. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is paint in the sky. For all of this, I'm using my larger paintbrush just because we're filling in the bigger blocks of color. So for the sky, I'm gonna start with just water on my paintbrush. I'm rinsing it off in my clean paint. And I'm actually just gonna fill in this entire background. Thank you. 
And I'm gonna go, I have this nice sky blue color here. I'm just gonna add in some brighter blue from my palette. So you guys can use any blue that you want for this. And now that my paper's not soaking wet, but still a bit damp, I'm gonna go in with the blue, but you'll notice that I'm not filling the entire page just because I want to leave some space for some clouds. So I'm just putting the blue into sections of where I added the water. I'm just gonna add a little bit more pigment to my paint there make it a bit brighter and just kind of follow along the same sections that I added. Now I'm not exactly following the photo here so whatever you end up painting on the top do your best to mirror on the bottom but with with clouds it's a little tricky so it's it's okay if it's not perfect. Um, all right so we're gonna fill it in here and again I'm doing the same thing I'm just painting over it completely with water. And then we're gonna go in with the blue so I can see, oh, I'm sorry, I missed a corner here. We're just gonna add some water in there. So I can see here that I had some blue right at the top corner. So I'll do the same thing and add it to the bottom corner there. And then I had it sort of along this ridge here going all the way along. And then we have it going along the top. Sometimes I find it helps when I'm trying to do these mirror kind of images by either just drawing it fully out before if you want it to be really accurate. Um, or if you're working on it, you can start with your paper upright, then you can turn it sideways and just turn it different ways because it just helps change your perspective to see what you're painting. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna go ahead and paint in is just some of the dirt that's kind of along the edge of the water there. So I'm gonna go in with a bit of a smaller paint brush and I'm gonna try to get a gray color. So I have a gray already mixed here, but if you guys want to, you can just take black and just have it really watered down. And we're just gonna go in in this space here. So what you guys will notice with a lot of the painting that I'm doing is I'm just following the drawing that I did at the beginning. So in the beginning, prior to starting this video, I had drawn just different blocks of color, or sorry, blocks of pencil. So we're following the pencil blocks as we go. And I'm starting with everything just super faint, super light, and I will build and add more, yeah, more color, more shading, more depth as we go along. All right, so next thing we're gonna add in is some trees. Um, I'm gonna start with my medium-sized paintbrush for the trees. And we're just gonna paint these in really loosely. So essentially I'm doing a bit of a guiding line going down and I'm just dotting in my paintbrush around it. So if it's easier for you guys, feel free to take a pencil and draw that line before you start. Because it definitely can help especially if you're just starting with painting trees. If you guys want to see more on how to paint trees with watercolor, then leave a comment below and I would love to show you a specific tutorial just on watercolor trees. They're honestly one of my favorite things to paint, one of my favorite things to see. I live in BC in Canada and 
honestly, when I'm hiking, driving anywhere, one of my favorite things is seeing these kinds of trees when they're, yeah, when it's rainy and there's fog in between. So if you guys are interested, I definitely could do a tutorial on that sometime. So you'll notice really messy following this downward imaginary line, or if you guys draw it in, that's good too. And then I'm just doing dots of paint around each side, going wider as we come towards the base of the tree. So I'm just gonna add in some in behind. I have this sort of yellowy green. Just wanna add some more colors and sort of just following the same idea in between the trees that I've already done. I'm just adding the brighter green paint. We're gonna add some more detail in front of it. We just wanna fill in that background space so that we can build off of that. All right, so now um, we're gonna do the same thing coming from the bottom here. This time I'm gonna start with this brighter color. And again, if it's easier for you guys at this point to just turn your paper upside down, then definitely go for it because it's a mirror image. Sometimes it's, it kind of messes with your brain a bit to try to paint upside down. So if you wanna just fully flip your paper around, then by all means do it. It definitely helps. I'm just gonna bring the green up a little higher so that it's closer to the blue that I have there. All right, now we're gonna go back in with this different tone of green. And again, following the same concept, we have the line coming down and the tree branches stemming out from the line, going wider as we head towards the bottom of the tree, in this case, wider as we come up. So now that we've finished that, we're gonna start adding in a bit of our shading. There are some trees that fill out this section here, but I don't want to paint those until we finished our main mountains. Um, it'll make it easier for us to just layer on top rather than trying to paint the details around. So for these mountains, we're gonna use a mix of different colors just to get yeah, sort of that granite effect. Um, so many pictures I was looking at of Yosemite, I noticed that the mountain just looks a completely different color depending on what time of day it is, where the sun is at, which, yeah, which I think is so cool. So we're gonna use a mixture of blue, some colors that have some red, pink, orange tones. Um, yeah, just all of them, we can have fun with it. And again, none of this needs to look too perfect. All right, so looking at the picture, I can see that there's some shading in this section here. And I had kind of drawn some guidelines in there. So with my small paintbrush, I've taken sort of this purpley blue mixture of paint and I'm gonna go with some small downward strokes in that section. And I have them kind of coming down to a point. And then I can see that they sort of create a shadow along the top here. So we're gonna copy that. And we'll do the shadow and then we'll bring it down. So now continuing with the photo we have, we see that it sort of comes in and then back out again. So we'll follow that concept and I'm just doing lines with my paintbrush and bringing it down and out. And then we have some 
more lines working towards the edge of our mountain. Now again, stemming from this top part, has some shadows coming down. One thing that I do when I'm painting, yeah, scenery and things that like mountains that have a lot of shadows, is if I want to be more precise with it, I'll take my pencil and I'll actually draw all of them out to, yeah, just to make it more accurate. Um, with this, I'm honestly not too picky. I'm just wanting to have fun with, with some colors, with some paint. So I'm following the photo, but definitely don't be too hard on yourself if it doesn't look exactly the same. So now we're gonna do this. Actually, before we move here, Let's do our reverse. So we're gonna do exact same thing we did here down below. If you guys want, feel free to flip your paper upside down. All right, so now we're gonna add some details into this mountain that's in behind. Again, I'm gonna go with some more blue paint. This time I'm going to make it a little bit darker and I'm going to mix a little bit of gray into it as well. And I'm just adding, again, lines where I see them in the photo. So I see it kind of on top of the mountain here and then these ones that I drew down below. And as you look at the mountain, you kind of see that there's a bit of a ridge here. So I'm just painting it in really lightly and then I'm just going to carry some of the color up. And then continuing on, I can kind of see that the mountain's angling out. So I'll paint my lines to follow that. And we'll do the same thing on the reverse. Okay, so we're gonna jump back to this side of our page briefly. And I actually just want to fill the sky in a little bit more just to come all the way in behind the trees there. So I'm just going in with my blue paint and then I'm just blending it in with where I had finished my lines off earlier. And we're gonna do same thing below. Now, coming back to this side, we're actually gonna paint our trees in here now, and then we'll go in with some more details in a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to this kind of yellow green that I had, sort of a moss green. In the photo reference that I'm using, it looks like it might be either early spring or close to winter, and a lot of the trees are dying in the photo so it's a lot of just branches but I would like to fill it up with some greenery so I'm gonna do not exactly copy the photo I'm gonna do the same concept I did here and we're just gonna add some trees in and again you'll notice right now I'm honestly not even painting specific looking trees I'm just adding in sort of just like splotches of this yellow green color paint and we'll do the same thing on the bottom side here. Right now as we're painting I kind of want us to be able to see the line where the water starts so I'm just gonna go in with my gray and just show the difference between what would be land and what would be water. So you'll see I just have it a little bit darker and the line's just gonna break it up a bit there. Right now we can see in the reference photo that we have, we have some nice really tall trees on this side. So we're gonna go in with our darker green. 
And just follow the same concept as this side and do some nice tall skinny trees. So we have our main line coming down. And then we're just using our paintbrush to add splotches around, going wider as we come towards the base. So as I do this, you'll see why it's nice to have painted in with a different tone of green in the background. It just adds, adds more depth to our painting, adds more colors. Um, so I'm bringing the trees smaller as I come towards the center of my page. And we're just gonna get some mini little trees here. Right, and now you guys know the drill. We're gonna do exact same thing on the other side. So feel free to either paint it upside down or flip your paper so that you're looking at it straight on. All right, so now I'm just gonna add a little bit more green on the left side here to these trees, just to make them a bit brighter. I'm going over exactly what I've already painted, but I just wanted to make it a little bit darker to match this side. All right, and now we're gonna add some more detail into these trees on the left side here. So going in with my darker green, we're actually only gonna add the detail on the top and not on the bottom. I'm doing really thin, thin line with my paintbrush and I'm adding in darker green paint on top. Some of the spots are exactly overlapping where I've already painted, some are not, just so you can see the different layers of coloring showing through. So this is just a simple way to give them more detail. It's a relatively small painting in general, so we just need to add, yeah, we don't need to add too much to it, just a little bit of depth with our layers of colors. All right, and we're gonna do the same on the other side just adding in some darker green. And I'm just dotting my paintbrush on top of where it is. Here I'm using a mixture of the wet on wet technique as well as, um, sorry, wet on dry, as well as dry on dry. With a lot of things with scenery, I'll often just let my paintbrush become more dry when I'm painting, because um, then it just adds it adds more texture to the painting itself. So the reason I'm adding more detail now to the top and not necessarily to the bottom is because the bottom is the reflection. So it doesn't need to look perfectly like the top does. Um, yeah, so just to kind of separate the two, I'm gonna be adding now more detail to the top and leaving the bottom half mostly how it is. So now we're gonna add some more detail into our mountain there. When I'm looking in the photo on this top half here, I can see that there's a lot more kind of red and orangey tones. So I'm gonna go into my palette. I have this sort of reddish orange color here. And same idea that we did with the blue. I'm gonna do the lines coming across the top and I can see it on the picture coming down a little bit. So we're gonna do that. I'm being a little bit more dramatic with my colors than the picture is, um, just cause it's, it's fun. <laughs> I like adding more colors. So you can see some of the ridges come across and then the lines come down. And then I want to bring some of this color into the other half of my painting. So I'm just gonna follow along the side of some of my blue lines here. And I'm just very loosely adding in this red color. So now I'm gonna do the same on the reflection. So we are doing a little bit more on the reflection, but just cause I'm adding a new color. 
And again, not being too, too picky, I'm painting this a little bit lighter than I did up top. And we'll just add, um, yeah, we'll add some of it in to our blue here. All right, now with this blue gray that we painted, I want to make a darker version of that. So I'm going in and mixing some gray with some more blue on my palette. And I'm actually gonna go on top of what I've already painted and kind of like we did with the trees, I'm covering some of the lines that I've already painted, but I'm more just adding some shading to it. So if you look closely, you'll see that I've overlaid my new color, but I can still see what I painted before showing through underneath. So we just wanna add, add some depth. I'm gonna go closer to the edge here just to give our mountain some definition. Fill in these blocks of color. And then I'm just gonna bring just a little bit over to this other side, not too much blue. All right, and now because this mountain sits in behind. I just want to fill it with a bit more color. So I'm going to take a bit of a green blue mixture and I'll water it down a bit. And again, I'm just going to add to where I've already painted. Add to these lines that we've done and just fill it all in. All right, and we are almost done. Just have a little bit more shading to do. So in these sort of little hills coming down into the water, we're gonna add some lines coming down from them. And so I'm just taking gray, but it's a little bit darker than what I had already. And I'm angling it in towards the water. So I'm doing the same thing on both sides. And then I'll do it very, very lightly on the bottom, but not as dark. So one of the things when you're painting with watercolor, especially scenery type photos, and sorry, I'm just going in now with some brown gray and I'm just adding more of the same detail. Um, yeah, so one thing that you guys will notice when you're painting these types of scenery photos is that as you start painting, it's often hard to see <laughs> where it's going. But if you guys just trust the process and stick with it, the more that you add more layering and more things, you'll see your painting just come together and essentially come to life, which is always so fun. All right, so last thing that I'm gonna do with the paint is mix in some yellow into our mountain. I just want it nice and watered down. And again, I'm sort of just brushing it in to the whole thing. I've, like I said, I've seen so many just stunning photos of the sun setting along, yeah, along the mountain and it's so pretty and you can see these just bright yellow and orange colors. So we're just adding some of that in between what we've already painted. All right, so now we're gonna go into our paintings with some pen and add some details. I am using Micron number 03. If you guys use anything smaller than a 08, that should be good. Anything thicker just, or yeah, anything thicker ends up looking too dark on the painting. So aim for something a little on the smaller side. But with this part, what we're doing is going to be very loose outlines of the shapes of the mountain essentially. So we will start with this main one here. And I'm just gonna follow along the top of it. And I'm not drawing a continuous line all the way through. I'm leaving some gaps. And then I'm gonna come down. And now I'm gonna follow some of the lines that I see on the painting. So sort of where these, where this pink paint is, I can see that it sort of comes down. So I'm gonna bring a line down there. And we're just going to continue. And then in this part where I can see the very clear shadows, 
I'm going to follow along with my painting and kind of outline that. And just fill in where the shadows would be. So a lot of that is where I've drawn the darker blue paint. And then I'm filling in here. And now with a lot of these different, yeah, just like lines of color that I did, we are going to sort of follow them with our pen and just create these kind of triangular shapes. So I have some lines and then I have some shapes that'll come up and either attach at the top or like this one, it comes down and we can just continue the line all the way down in this corner here. I'm gonna follow this blue color all the way up. So we're just adding essentially some in a way shading to our mountain. Not quite, because I'm doing a very specific type of line work that I like to do with my pens here. Um, yeah, to give it sort of an abstract feel to our paintings, which is a lot of fun to do once you get into. All right, so now we're gonna work on this little mountain here. And I'm kind of following it. It looks like it has some trees at the top, so I'm doing some more thicker blocks of color. And then I can see that this one comes down and then it begins to extend out in the photo. I can sort of see a ridge coming across here and then a hill coming outward. So again, we're gonna follow this with our pen and then I'll accentuate the lines of the hill that comes out outward there. So I'm gonna copy the same thing on our reflection, but on the reflection, I'm gonna simplify it a little bit. Um, yeah, just again, to give that separation between the actual image and what the reflection is below. So easiest place to start is with our main mountain. And then I'll do the main outline of this little guy here. Now we'll add some detailing detail lines into our reflection there. Again, with these lines, I'm just pressing a little lighter with my pen. Sort of copying what I've drawn above, but not, not too picky about it. All right, so now as you do that, you can kind of see the difference that I have here where it's a lot softer and lighter at the bottom, more defined at the top. So now we're gonna do sort of this water line here. So first thing I'm gonna do is start with kind of where I had the shading difference. I'm gonna do my line all the way across. And then I'll start with these hills here. So we'll follow it up and coming from the top edge of the hill, I'm going to do lines coming downward and inward. So I can attach them sort of in those triangular shapes if I want. I can just do little ridges coming down so that you can see that this hill angles in towards the water. So again, some little ridges coming down, some of them are triangular, giving it a mixture of a realistic and abstract feel. And then on the bottom, I'm just gonna trace the bottom line really, really lightly. And I'm actually gonna leave it like that without adding those additional ridges. Now for the trees, I've already painted them pretty dark. So you can go in with your pen and add a bit of an outline. Essentially what I'm doing is a bit of a scribbly outline around the shapes of the branches. But because for these ones, I've painted them pretty dark, I don't need to do a ton in the background where the green is. I'm doing a very loose, very scribbly line just to fill in that space to give it a bit more definition. And then I'll do the same on this side and just give it some more definition. So with my pen, I'm just going around kind of the loose 
shapes of the branches and essentially just doing scribbles <laughs> around the shape of the tree and then same where the green is. You can see it a little bit more here with the with the brighter green just because it's a lot lighter in the background. So you can see that this does not by any means need to be precise. I'm just adding some more, some more definition. And like I said, when you start getting into drawing with watercolor and ink, you can have a lot of fun with just different ways of adding detail. So on the bottom, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna space it out a bit more. So I'll just add pen in a few spots where I feel like we could use some more definition of the shapes, but not nearly as much as I did on the top. Just because for this painting specifically, I want to make sure that I keep the separation between where the water is and yeah, what's reality, what's reflection essentially. So I'll outline some of the spots where the green trees would be. part is fun because you can't really mess up too much because you're just scribbling in the general shape of the tree and yeah that is where I would leave it so if you guys want you're welcome to outline around the painting make sure when you guys finish you guys sign your paintings I'm just gonna put my signature in the little corner there and then you're all done with painting Yosemite National Park. So once you guys have finished, if you notice that there's still pencil lines on your paper, then now's a good time to just go in and erase anything, yeah, anything that's left. Otherwise, you guys are all set with Yosemite National Park. Thanks for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Also, if you followed along with me, make sure to send me a photo on Instagram at Alexandra Victoria Studio. I love to see what you guys are painting, so please do share. And if there's another national park that you'd like to see, comment below what your favorite one is and I will add it into a future video. Also, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.